Oh man, we're almost there, we're almost there. Almost have everything you ever needed to know about clay, so you can build anything you ever want to. Well, not really. But the basics, we almost have all the basics. Okay? So let's go ahead uh, and take out our sculpture. Now, I, I didn't do too much to this since last time, uh, which was uh, in film time about two seconds ago, in real time about two minutes ago. And what I have here is not necessarily a finished sculpture, because I do want to talk about cleaning it up, having it uh, finally presentable. And in some cases, um, oh, uh-oh, it broke. Let's pretend that this kind of hardened up, all right? And it did actually break. Now, can I still fix this? Can I? How? Of course I can. Fix anything. Score and slip, okay? So even a piece like this, even if it breaks off, okay, you can actually, uh, you know, take your fork, in this case, when it's a small piece, and score and slip it, add some slip to there, and as a review, press it together. Now, here's a little um, reason why I wanted to do this, is because when you join two pieces together, sometimes they don't join perfectly. Okay? So, I'm taking, uh, you know, a, a uh, smaller section, even the fork would work, I do want to try to bring clay from one element to another. And in a way, it's like stitching it. And give a good look at that. Okay. And it's, it's ugly right now, I, I know this, okay? But it's getting repaired, okay? So you stitch it, and then of course, while you're stitching it, you're kind of filling in the gaps, and then you can take the wood tool again, clean it up. And again, this doesn't have to be a super quick uh, fix. It should take your you should take your time. But again, just like anything, it's not about smoothening it. It's about making sure that the clay is getting attached to itself. Now, in all honesty, I am doing all these videos in a day. So the clay does not really have a lot of time to set up or dry. Okay? But moments ago, I didn't speed up the film. I didn't do anything. Moments ago, this was in two pieces, and now it's in one again. Right? But I took the tool, I took the wood tool, and I brushed the surface area of it to clean it up. Which actually leads me to uh, our finishing techniques. Right? Normally, I like the clay to dry slowly. If you let it dry slowly, it doesn't have a chance to really quickly separate from itself. Because a thinner piece against a thicker piece will dry at different rates. So if you attach a thin item to a thick item, that thin item is going to dry faster and has a chance of detaching. If you let it slowly dry, chances are is that it'll dry more evenly at an equal rate. Okay? So as the clay begins to harden, use that to your advantage. There's a few things you can do while the clay is hardening. You can still add or repair elements. Bam, I just did that, okay? Um, the clay was still quite fresh, so it was a little easier to do, but even if the clay gets a little bit firm, you can still attach pieces. Uh, easier to clean the surface. As the clay begins to get a little bit hard and you use something like the wood tool, okay, then you can run it over the edge of the surface and create a nice smooth texture that way. 
Okay? Now, on the same token, you can take something like your loop tool, right? And you can actually carve into the piece. Now, you can do this when it's wet. I realize that. But right now, my piece is pretty darn wet. And what happens is the clay starts to ball up. Okay? So I would be better off waiting. Oops, my tool just totally fell apart. My, I would be better off just waiting a bit. But this leads me to, you know, even if you have a tool that's um, broken, still usable. So what that allows you to do is carve into it. You know, when it's still somewhat wet, you can still carve into it. But as it begins to harden, you can actually press a little bit harder. You can create designs. You can sculpt into it. Which leads me to what you will ultimately be doing with all your sculpture is you will be adding to it and subtracting from it. So in hand building sculpture, you're, you're primarily using your hands to form the elements. Okay? But you can use tools to finish it off, carve into it, uh, and so, in that sense, you're subtracting from it. Now, take a look at some of those carvings that I did. They're pretty rough. Okay? Now, as the clay begins to set and get a little harder, you, you can, um, you, you'll find it easier to clean it up. But if you want to have a nice, clean surface, okay, you do need to take the time. And as the clay gets a little bit uh, firmer, it's a little bit easier to like burnish the clay. Really resist smoothening out everything with your finger. Okay. I do use my finger just to kind of get rid of some of the big stuff, okay. but I am using this tool, the uh, wood tool, or even like the tool that had a loop on it and the edge now just has kind of a squared edge, that's totally usable too. Or even if you want to take your fork and use that. The idea is that you can carve into clay and create nice little textures. Okay? And the cleanup process should really take almost as long as the building process. Um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna share with you my pet peeve, okay? Drawing on clay. I, I, I know uh, we do a lot of drawing in the class, and you could say, well, I'm using the element of line to express myself, but so often, People will just say, they just start to draw, you know, and instead of creating texture, they just draw. Now, I'm not saying that every single line is horrible. You know, you can use lines texturally. As you can see, that's somewhat effective in creating kind of a, an effect, okay? But generally speaking, uh, try to avoid just drawing on your clay piece. So a final note about finishing a ceramic piece is um, going to the very first thing that we talked about, and that is air. Can air be trapped anywhere in your piece? In this particular case, I have an open bowl, and I have this kind of beak thing, and I have some carving. Nowhere is there really a place that can trap air. Now, if I were to take another half of a cup and place it there and create an air trap, that is a problem. But at this particular stage, it is not. Okay? I say that because when you fire a piece, it runs the chance of blowing up. In our particular case, we are really worried more about the structure and the stability of the piece, um, and not so much if it can be fired or not. 
uh, but I will go over that concept later. But that is just one thing to keep into consideration when you're finishing a piece. Okay. So there it is, uh, basic principles of working with clay. At this point, if it is done, if it is all finished, yeah, you can actually just set it down and walk away from it. And over the next few days, you'll see it get drier and drier. It'll start to change color and turn into that, uh, you know, very brittle, powdery um, substance, you know, dust, basically. <laughs> Uh, dust held together. That's basically what a bone dry piece is. And, uh, and with, when all is said and done, you can fire it. Okay. That's about it. The basics of putting clay together. Drawing, thickness, air, all those things. Very important. Now you can build almost anything you want. All right. Time to design our first sculpture. Okay.